Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another Second Breakfast podcast. I'm Andy Roth alongside Phil Duvall. Say hi, Phil. Good to be back, Andy. Good to be back. Hi, Good everybody. Back. Yeah, can't wait. Can't wait. Very excited. Big day. Big it day. is a big day. It is a big day. We only got to be with you all once last week, for those of you who are counting. Uh, and uh, and listen, I notice. I notice the loss. It's true. Me too. I, not- I notice the absence. So uh, yes, if you would like to uh, prevent weeks in the future with only one uh, second breakfast podcast, you you have a couple of choices. And Phil, I've, oh. I've, I've, I've thought a lot about this. One, uh, figure out a way to make the old Beatles song come true and have there be eight days in a week. You know, I like it. Or send second breakfast podcast five hundred thousand dollars. I think. That would, I think that, that would, and you can wire it, uh, I guess, you know what, send us, if you're a Nigerian prince, you can just email us at secondbreakfastpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. Uh, I think that would. If you're going to write a check, can you make it out to cash? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's my, it's, it's, it, it's my actual given name. Uh, cash yeah. Roth. Cash. Cash Roth. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think five, I think, I think 500 grand would, would. Like, guarantee eight podcasts in any given month, right? Yeah, I like, think that's right. Right? Like, whatever I month we true. got that check in, we would be sure to do eight podcasts. I would guarantee that. To, I'll, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put one on a limb. If, if you are to send us a check for $500,000, $500, I guarantee you an eight podcast month. Yep. That's something that I will guarantee you. Folks, you're not going to get that anywhere else. You're, you're getting that nowhere else. Nowhere else. I'm still confused as to how we're not the most famous podcasters in the history of the world yet. Sure. But only confused, not angry. I'm sure. not worried about it. Mm-hmm. I feel at peace with what and one with the world and the universe. But I'm I'm curious. I'm curious. That's all. I'm curious. I might go a little further uh, and to use Please. And to use, a, to use another to use another podcast title in my response to us not being uh, the most famous podcast, WTF guys. Yeah, which is yeah, which is apparently actually the most popular podcast in the history of the world. That's good I, for Mark Marin. Yeah. yeah, good for no, Mark totally, Marin. Totally. So so by the way, by the way, I was talking to someone last night who's driving across country today. He's left today to go across the country. To, and he's going to end up in Virginia for some reason, and I said. Uh, I said you should download a bunch of our podcasts and listen. To them. He's driving by himself, and awesome. he's driving, and he's doing like the four day version of it. Which I've I've driven across country I think five times. Wow! I think five times, um, and I've done it alone. And I've done it with other people, and mm-hmm. I've done it fast. And I've done it slow, and uh, um, it can be grueling when you're doing the ten hour days. You know. Sure. So I said you should be listening to our podcasts. You should download them and listen to them on iTunes. And he's like, I will do that. And I go, Don't just say you'll do that. <laughs> like he answered too quickly. He was like. That's a good idea, and I was like, "No, no, no!" I go, "I go, don't you? Are you actually going to do it, or are you just saying that?" He goes, "Well, I don't actually." Immediately, he goes, "Well, I don't actually have iTunes," and I was like, "Oh, okay." So you literally were just lying to my face. You li- not, not figuratively, not like not exaggerating. You just looked at me and were like, "I will do that thing that I can completely incapable of doing that I that I cannot do." Like if I was like, you were like, "Phil, you should juggle knives," and I'm like, "I would do that right now." Really? No, 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 not really. I don't even have the knives. This isn't gonna happen. Awesome, I love it. I have, I have no knives. knives. I have, I have plastic. I, have no I could, I could juggle. Otherwise, spoons. I would do this. I could, I could juggle spoons. Plastic, Come on. plastic spoons. Yeah. Paper so plates. Okay. Uh, what an so exciting week it's been. It is. It has it been an exciting week. It was an exciting week for me, oh, and, yeah. and I feel like we never talked because we only did one podcast. So, how you been, man? I've been great. Oh, I forgot a movie on my list that I have to add right now. I've been great. I saw seven movies last week, Andy. That is significantly more than me. Please, um, go. Okay. What? Hold on. I got to figure out what date. Okay, the 19th, the 12th. That's the 12th. That's 12th. Well, you need to figure out the date. Do don't you? Don't you date? Yeah, don't you date them? No. I mean, I do oh, because there's a timestamp on the email, but I don't always oh, you, email. Oh, but you email them. Yes. Yeah, I email myself. Um, I... It's just, I know it's not dirty, but it sounds dirty. Emailing myself? Yeah, you see? <laughs> no. Said it again. No, the, the prurient aspect of my tone of voice, what you're, what you're reading as like, 
like CD is just like me being completely and totally having none of you right now. It's Did like, I read that wrong? Did I read that wrong? <laughs> All right. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Andy, I saw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven movies, and I'm not going to lie to you. Every single one of them, and I'm not kidding. Okay. A classic. I can't wait. Hit me. I, I mean, this is a murderer's row. All right. Okay. Uh, I, I started. I started my viewing week with a film called Captain Phillips. Ooh. Okay. Which was a movie that one of our friends, who is a, an increasingly grumpy reviewer, um, <laughs> just just hated. Just hated it. Sure. Um, I I loved it. Okay. I, I didn't just like it. I, I loved it. I, I was I was thoroughly impressed with this movie. Okay. I went in sort of going, I, you've seen the previews. Everyone's yes. seen the previews for Captain Phillips. And I remember thinking, why is this movie called Captain Phillips? Like, it's about this whole event. Right. And the way they're selling it is about this true story. Right. And then about a half hour of the movie, I was like, no, really, why is this called Captain Phillips? And then about halfway through the movie, I was like, that's why it's called Captain Phillips. <laughs> and, at the, and, and, and by the way, there's two dialogues going, two, two inner monologues, right? One is that one. Okay. And the other one is similar, but not the same. Yep. Which is, which is, you can see why they're of a piece, though. Which is, why is Tom Hanks, why is Tom Hanks being talked about for an Oscar for this movie? Sure. Similar conversation to why it's called Captain Phillips. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. And in the same timeline, answered the same way, which was... Well, okay, I could maybe, and then at the end of the movie, okay. <laughs> right, sure. To the degree that, now I haven't seen Dallas Buyers Club, and which is, I guess, the movie that they're going to push Matthew McConaughey for, although I would have loved to have seen him get nominated for Mud. Right. But, uh, well, we'll see. It had, nothing's happened yet, but, you know, I'm already, I'm already guessing. Right. But, but to the degree that if Tom Hanks wins his third Oscar for this, fine. Nice. Fine, fine. I don't know that he will, and I don't know that he quote-unquote should. If he gets nominated... I mean, if he wins for this, great. Like, sure. I don't know that he should yet, but it will not be, like, wrong. Do you know what I mean? Right, like, right, yeah, yeah. This yeah. will not be a, pre like, oh, it's Tom Hanks, give him a nomination. It right. will be, like, this is a worthy, including a New England accent that is both plausible and not showy. Nice. So, um, I almost don't I, believe you. Are there New I, England? I... I I don't Anyways, know New England accents yeah. that are that are one of those things, let alone I know. Both. I know. <laughs> uh, Catherine Keener is in this movie for about four seconds. Not even sure why they bothered, but that's okay. Love Catherine Keener. Love to see her get paid. Right. Um, totally. Okay. So, anyways, and I could see one of the Somali pirates getting nominated actually for this. Movie. Okay. The main guy. The main. The main. Yes. The, yeah. Sure. He he is he he does a phenomenal job okay. and is terrifying. Um, okay. Uh, okay. I have okay. Then I saw a little movie called His Girl Friday. Awesome. Have you seen this movie, Andy? Yeah, Rosalind okay, Russell. I've yes, never seen yes. it. Yes. Okay. If you haven't, there's. I'm now catching up on Cary Grant. Nice. Which Cary Grant is a guy that, to me, like, he was just a handsome fellow mm -hmm. that was in some stuff, and I was like, well, that's nice, but didn't necessarily think like, oh, Cary Grant, like, we need to pay attention to Cary Grant, like. It was almost like he was of the, the – people talk about the glamorous days, and so right. I thought of him as glamorous. Sure. Dude, he is such an awesome actor. Oh, yeah. He's, he, when he does the fast-paced screwball comedy, he's a <laughs> genius. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fan. He's, he's, he, he actually – it reminds me, although this guy's such a beefcake, it, people wouldn't think of these things as the same thing. But when Channing Tatum did his, his turn on street, uh, 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 21 Jump Street, and people were like, oh, Channing Tatum's funny. Right, right. And I don't know that and Channing Tatum has a long way to go before we talk about him the way we talk about Cary Grant. But it was that surprisingness that someone that gorgeous could also be hilarious. Sure, yes. And his timing could be what it is. Yes. Um, I had always thought of Cary Grant as handsome and dashing. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I'm now realizing, and I've seen Bringing a Baby, but for some reason that's one movie. I'm now starting to realize, dude, that guy is hilarious. Totally. His totally. Girl Friday was, was an absolute classic. I love Howard Hawks. I want to watch every Howard Hawks movie. <laughs> Howard Hawks is probably one of my favorite filmmakers that I don't realize is one of my favorite filmmakers. Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, then I watched The Station Agent, which is one of your favorites. Uh, it, you know what? It is. In fact, is I had like an favorites. Andy Roth. I had an Andy Roth-inspired weekend. <laughs> okay. 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 
Station Agent, which, again, remember, I don't, I'm not going to say any more about a lot of these movies except to say that I just said that all of them are classics. Wait, wait, real quick, real quick. I want to go back to His Girl Friday real quick, just for a second. Specifically about Cary Grant. Have you not seen The Philadelphia Story? I own The Philadelphia Story, and I love it, but I had always been... It's a different I, kind of comedy. It's a different It's a different kind of comedy, I'll grant you. And to be honest with you, I came into that movie as a as a Jimmy Stewart fan, so he's the one I paid attention to. Fair. And literally, I'm glad you brought up Philadelphia Story, yeah. because I have seen him in these things, but for some reason, his performance in His Girl Friday makes me want to go back and watch Philadelphia Story, which I've seen at least five or six times, and which I own, but I want to watch it... Only watching Cary Grant. Right. Does that make sense? It does. Like, it does. And now because I, I've always paid, I've paid attention to Jimmy Stewart and I've paid attention to Catherine Hepburn. Of course. But and, I haven't and, paid attention to Cary Grant. And those are both I mean, worthwhile things to what do. A, clearly, it's, uh, it's an embarrassment of riches. Yes. And now, now I want to rectify a mistake that had to be made, but but a mistake that I made nonetheless. I actually interrupted someone in this world while they were talking about the station agent. Please. The station, agent, the station agent does all the things that independent movies do that should be annoying and pulls them off. Yep. The sparse soundtrack, the small cast, the ending that's a non-ending, um, a movie that technically seems to actually not have a... I mean, it has a plot, but in the sense of, like, it's not a major arc, so right. to speak. Right, that's right. It is literally a character study, which can be the worst kind of movie, and it ends up being... Absolutely, and I use this word in the non-cute sense. Right, adorable in the sense that it is worthy of being adored. Well played. Not like, oh, isn't that so cute? But like right. literally, while you're watching it, just going like, oh, I just want to watch these people. Right. Yes. Yes. All of them. Yes. Um, it manages to make Michelle Williams less attractive than she is, which I don't understand because. Right. I, I watch Oz the Great and Powerful, and just she's the most stunning creature. I hate calling women creatures. It feels so mean. But she's the most <laughs> stunning woman. Like, she's just stunning. Anyways. Yes. Okay, then I watched, then again, uh, and then to continue my weekend of Andy, <laughs> I watched Before Sunrise. Ah. Which the last time I saw, I was 16. Hmm. Possibly. So I may as, may as well have seen it for the first time. Possibly. Slightly more knowledgeable in the ways of relationships than you were at 16. But only slightly. But only slightly. Um, pa, um, pa, um, pa, um, pa, um, pa. It's amazing how... Uh, poquito. Poquito. <laughs> it's amazing how much relationship you can have and how stupid you can still be. But I find ways. And uh, Don't we uh, all. Don't we I'm, all. It, it, it still is not my favorite kind of movie. Sure, but it really is a wonderful thing, and I, yeah. it made me look forward to see before to seeing before sunset, which I've never seen, and yeah. before midnight, which I've never seen. Yeah. yeah, so I'm ready to see those now. Yeah, uh, and Julie Delpy, my goodness gracious, she's she is she is someone who is almost too beautiful because she does not get she does not get credit for being an amazing Thank actress. You. Thank because, you. Because like, oh, she's just a she's just a hot French chick. Because she's so. Beautiful. She's like otherworldly. Uh, like she's well, and here's the, and that's the yeah. thing is like so we just brought up Michelle Williams. The thing about Michelle Williams is she is beautiful and stunning, but she manages to get roles that are really like that. I don't know that somehow highlight her attractiveness, but still like our meaty, meaty, meaty roles. Yep. yep. Not right. that Julie Delpy doesn't, but Julie Delpy is so ethereal yep. in her beauty that there is something where you almost forget that she's just like a force of nature of an actor. I yeah. mean, like yes. she as an actor is like. It's like on a level where you don't, you know what it is? There's no, you don't know she's acting. That's you could right. actually just, you could actually just talk yourself out of thinking she's good by being like, nah, she's just being her. <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's not acting, that's just what talking an, for the camera. What an amazing quality. Yes, she's that's right. She's so authentic. I that's loved right. her. And, and Ethan Hawke, I just, the goatee, I just want him to shower the whole time and shave. Just shower and shave. I, I know I, you're on a trip. Just shower and shave. I hate you. I hate you. Because he is... Because he is, I mean, there, there is, there is a, there is a, a, a constituency out there that thinks he is like the hottest guy ever, and I, I kind I of don't get that, but, but, but different strokes, totally cool. Yep. But I think, and I don't think he is the most versatile, talented actor I've ever seen. But in this movie and in these three movies, go ahead. He goes toe to toe in that quality with Julie Delpy. You cannot tell she her would, acting. Her in performance the best way. wouldn't. Her performance would not be her performance Without if his performance. performance was not his. And, and, so well. and 
I am so still well okay. You've got to so understand well something. I saw this movie right after I saw like the same year or whenever I saw Reality Bites, uh-huh. <laughs> and I have been angry with Ethan Hawke ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't really fair to Ethan Hawke. It's, that's 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 that's. But I well I I flamingly angrily hated the ending of Reality Bites. Sure. So much <laughs> that the idea that like I still was mad at him when this movie came out. Awesome. Or when I saw it, I was nice. like, no. So, anyways, sure. okay, okay. The weekend of Andy continued with. <laughs> A movie that you've been tr- goading me into seeing, in which we will talk about later, uh, called Warrior. Andy, this is one of the most magnificent movies I have ever seen. Phil, I'm 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 a little emotional. I'm a little emotional. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. We'll talk about it. But all I will say is this: even, even as much as our tastes align. And even as much fun as it is when our tastes don't align, and I, I enjoy it as much as you do, I am sure. I was so nervous for this movie because I didn't need you to like it. I no, didn't need you to you love it. You still would like it. Yes. I didn't need you to like it or love it. But part of me needed you to love it. Love if, it. Love if, it. I, if I had seen it and been like, yeah, it's pretty good, you would have been like, ugh. Oh. That would have been worse than you saying that movie sucked. What did you do? What what did you right. do to me? Yes. Right. Yes. I texted Andy halfway through this movie and was like, "Oh, oh." <laughs> <laughs> like I literally texted you halfway through the movie and was like, "Andy, already." Yes. And I was texting my brother saying, "I haven't even finished this movie and I urge you to see it, please." And I and I, I don't know my brother. I, I, I when I say okay, so I, I have a brother Grant that we watch a lot of the same movies. I have a brother Matt that we don't really necessarily talk about movies. Sure. But he watches a lot of movies, but we don't talk about them. <laughs> okay. Okay. I talk about I my brother Grant. I talk a lot about movies because when I was a teenager, he was like right out of college, and he would he and I would talk about movies. And right. my other brother and I we just never connected that way. Sure. So it's part of my brother and I's Grant and I's relationship that we talk about movies. Mm-hmm. Matt and I hardly ever talk about them. Yep. My brother Matt's the one who's mad at me that I don't that I make fun of Forrest Gump. He like he mocks me like he's just like you're an idiot like you're an idiot. So I don't generally give him recommendations, but Matt, if you're listening to this, like you should see Warrior. Everyone should see Warrior. My wife watched this movie, loved it. I we're gonna talk about yes. it, but it is it fits into my it. I mean, it immediately is one. I mean, I have to go back and look at 2011. Uh-huh. But it is immediately in the conversation for best movie of 2011. Yeah. Immediately. Yes. 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 And uh, I, I mean everything about it. I mean, yeah. just can I just say Oscars for everyone? For everyone. Just here. 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 Oscar. Here. Yes. Oscars Warrior. for Oscars for as Gary Oldman said in Leon. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and then to add to that, Squints Paladoris. Forever. <laughs> Oscars forever. Yes, yes. yes. So what Oscar what year do they win the Oscar for? Forever. <laughs> okay. Um before I leave this, I just want to say, and then we'll move on. I just want to say because I am taking too long, but I just want to say right. um that this movie is streaming on both Netflix and Amazon Prime. It's free if you've got Prime, it's three bucks if you don't. We watched it for five or six minutes on Netflix, and it buffered seven times. Ooh. And then I switched over to Amazon and had a completely flawless viewing experience. Fair. Um, when I watch Netflix on my computer, I have no problems. When I watch it on my Blu-ray player, I have problems almost every time. That's so interesting. I think I do, too. And, uh, and Amazon instant like butter, people. And I got to tell you, if you have either one of these creatures, watch Warrior. Go watch Warrior. Watch warrior and by the way when things aren't free people are like oh, i'm not gonna watch that it's not free we used to go to the video store all the time and spend three bucks spend the three bucks i know yeah watch seriously Sir, I, it is it is only because i don't know everyone's financial situation watching this podcast right now that i don't say just buy the movie i will buy this movie and 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 i would go further if you don't have a blu-ray player Buy a Blu-ray player and then buy this movie on Blu-ray because it is surprisingly beautiful, like like is, like cinemat- cinematographically, 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 yep, 
<laughs> ten bucks on Blu-ray, guys. Ten bucks on Blu-ray. You can afford that. Oh, man. Although, although I have to tell you, Andy, look at the Blu-ray cover, and it will disappoint you. In I all have... seriousness, the, the cover of the Blu-ray will disappoint you. I believe you, although I have the Blu-ray. I well, can't... it disappoints I can't remember what it is. Go ahead. It's this point. Okay, and then and then uh, and then yesterday I watched The Shining, which we're going to talk about later this week. Mm. Um, we'll talk about it later this week. Okay. It reminded me why Jack Nicholson is my favorite actor of all time. Good. It is one of the most magnificent performances I have ever seen. Good. I don't. I just don't have the words for what he does in this movie, much Whoa. less the whole movie. Yeah. I hope, you have the words, I, have, I hope you have the words later this week. It's going to be a really boring and silent podcast. I will say one thing. Say the one thing. That Stephen King... I was reading a bunch about the movie while watching it, actually, because sure. I, was so un, I was so uncomfortable that I actually just... I wasn't scared, like, in a horror movie. I was mm-hmm. unsettled and unnerved, right. even though I've seen this movie before. Right. And so I was wa- reading all this stuff on it, and, you know, and we've talked about the fact that Stephen King doesn't like it. And the fact, and what, but what I found really interesting is one of the quotes that Stephen King has is when he watches it because because he says that he doesn't believe and and in talking to Stanley Kubrick he didn't believe that Stanley Kubrick actually had any respect for the supernatural or belief in the supernatural uh-huh. and so he said this movie becomes very clinical and he says his problem with Kubrick in this movie although you could apply this to Kubrick a lot is that Kubrick thinks too much and feels too little okay which is a which is an interesting critique of him mhm and what I will say is it actually makes, to me, it makes Jack Nicholson the ideal actor for Kubrick movies. Because to me, because okay. Ku- Nicholson is an exposed nerve. It's not that he's not an intelligent actor, because he's you can tell he's an incredibly intelligent actor. It's true. But he is so primal and so emotional in his acting mm-hmm. that I actually think it ends up being maybe the best, maybe the best director actor collaboration of Kubrick's career might be Nicholson Kubrick in this movie. We could talk more about that later. But I just want to throw that out there. I don't know if that means anything to you, but like if he thinks too much and feels too little, then Nicholson is his perfect foil. Right. Spirit animal. Yeah. Yeah. Spirit animal. I like you. Yeah. I like you. Yeah. I like you. I like the things about you. I like your <laughs> is that seven? Nope. One more. Wreck it Ralph. Saw Wreck It Ralph for the fifth time this year. You're doing it right. Cried again. Oh gee. Because, because of course you did. Because I'm a human being. So, uh, I only saw three movies this week. Uh, two of them, phenomenal. One will be my one big thing, so I'll leave that for last. Uh, first one, Warrior. I watched mm. it, mm. and and I finished it. Of, I had to. I had to split it up over two days. And as I as I, I I finished it maybe about six hours before you texted me about it, and I was like, and I was out, I was out when I got your text, and I was like, I wish I were home. I would put Warrior on again. Yeah. Yes. I it's 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 just it's. I did there 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 aren't any words. I then saw I, then this this is not chronological order, but whatever. I saw Twelve Years a Slave. Twelve Years a Slave. Wow. Okay. I. I. That's one of those movies where it's like I know I'm gonna see it. It's it's tough to talk about a movie like this in terms of enjoying it. But right. It is, that's why I'm. Yeah. But I think that's is, what I was worried about. I was worried about that with Captain Phillips. Sure. And was surprised by how. See, even the word entertaining because of what it's about. But right. I was surprised by no, no. how much I was able to watch it. Well, Paul Greengrass, man. Like, he does that. Like, like he does that with a lot of topics. And Although I will never see United 93 again. I mean, I will never. Not ever. ever. <laughs> Not ever. Um, Hardly ever. <laughs> no, no. No, never. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no. The song doesn't apply <laughs> because never. Uh, and then the third movie I saw, and, and you know, the less said the better until we get into one big thing, which, and I'll just continue, is Sharknado. Oh, boy. I saw Sharknado. Yeah. And here we go with the one big thing. Here's the okay. one big thing. The one big thing is this. Sharknado sucked. But that's not how, yeah. but, but here's the deal, folks. Not how you think I mean it. Well, yes, how you think I mean it. But also, I said but this. But also. But you're right. 
I said this to Phil, and I said this to our dear director, Keith Percaro. Uh, I was disappointed in Sharknado. And you might ask yourself, how is it possible to be disappointed in Sharknado? And my answer to that, my, my answer to that has to do with what I think is the worst movie that I have ever seen, The Room. The Room is a movie that is so bad on every level, it is the worst movie in every possible category that I can think of. It is the worst directed movie. It has the worst script, the worst acting, the worst music, the worst plot, the worst cinematography, the worst sound wow. design. Wow. But here's the deal. You want to know why people love it? And I'm not going to, I'm like, and I really mean love it. Love it the way people love Rocky Horror Picture Show because because it is in, they, they do screenings that are similar. You know, people go and they laugh at the movie and, and whether or not it's okay to laugh at a movie, I, I say it is. I mean, there are there are motivations for doing so that, that make me happier than others, but I, there is something about, about it that is almost... It's going to seem ridiculous that I'm going to say this, but I, but I mean it. It's almost, it's so bad, and in the way that it's bad, that it's life-affirming. It's like, it's like, you know that saying, like, you're the result of billions of years of evolution, act like it? Right. You right. know? It's like that, but for movies. Do you have any idea how hard it is to make get a movie made? This guy did it. This guy did it, and there is no point at which he demonstrated any sort of talent. There just isn't. Because he has none. And mm. yet, he got it done. He got it done and he got it in front of my eyeballs. And that's not all that impressive because every movie gets in front of my eyeballs. But he got it in front of a lot of people's eyeballs. And that is like, you know what? I would hire this dude for a job. Not a movie making job. But yeah. another job because I know that he's going to like, he's, he's, he, he will figure out a way. You know? Yeah. Yes. I, I, no, you know, look, you know, I, I this is like when I was going through seminary, which is grad school, even though some of my friends would laugh at that. It, it, it is, you know, <laughs> but I had a lot of people that had a hard time with it, whether it be the the work they were doing or just the whatever they were going through. And there's a, it's a weird thing. It's actually not that different from law school in the sense that, you know, well, in, in the sense that, and, and I guess it depends on who you are and what you're doing at law school, because some people just go to get a law degree. Right. But when you go to seminary, it's like, okay, my entire future hinges on whether or not I pull this off. Like, yes. It's even if it's not that hard, it, there's this weird baggage on top of it. Uh huh. And there's we had to take we had to take a test like you guys had the bar. We actually had this thing called the general ordination examinations, and we had like a, a four day a four day test where we'd go and to answer these three hour long questions and blah 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 for four days. And I had these friends that were like freaking out about it, right? Because. Sure. You know, it's freaky. Because it's, it's a big deal. Uh, and it's very similar to the bar. Like, you don't know what the questions are going to be beforehand. You don't know what resources you're going to be able to use. All that stuff. Timed, written. Okay. So, m people were freaking out about it. And I was like, they're like, are you freaking out? I'm like, no. <laughs> they're like, why? And I go, well, one, I don't know what the questions are going to be. So, how can I freak out about them? That's, that's and then I go, well said. And then I go, and then I go, two, have you seen some of the idiots that they've let be priests? <laughs> like, <laughs> morons. <laughs> <laughs> if they can do it, I guarantee you, you can do it. You know what I mean? Like, yes. I promise you yes. that if I, the people that we've seen make it, made it, we can make it. Come that's on, right. folks. And it's true. Like, when you see something like Sharknado, there's a party that's just like, I could fly to the moon tomorrow. Right, right. R that's so well said. But, and, but here's, here is where Sharknado parts ways with the room. Because that is absolutely true about the room. Everything you said is true about the room, full stop. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But there's something else that's true about Sharknado. And that is, whereas, whereas the room just wants to do something and totally fails at it on yep. every possible yep. level, Sharknado wants to do something and comment on it at the same time. It's meta. If it had a face, it would be winking and smirking at you. Oof. And, and, and I'm all for meta. All right, a well placed meta commentary is I did that's 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 like butter for me, but not all the time. It's I, like it's an all syrup super squishy, and I can't. I, it's too much, and I just like th there is a joke. There is a joke about menstruation. Okay. That yeah, and I won't go any further. But it is. But it is so tasteless 
that there's no way someone wrote it as an actual joke. They wrote it because they wanted people to, they wanted idiots like me to have a podcast and say, oh my God, that was a menstruation joke in Sharknado. I can't believe they actually went there. Of course you went there because you didn't want to go there. You wanted people to talk about how you went there. That's, yeah. that's, that is, that is, you know what that is? That's art that isn't honest. And I, and I use art deliberately. <sighs> I, I use art deliberately because you know what is honest art? The room. It might be terrible, but it's honestly terrible. Shame on you. Yeah, Sharknado. I, I, I think, I, think uh, I might even disagree with you. No, I've never seen Sharknado. I'm never going to. Good. But I might disagree with you in terms of you were like, well, I might, I might, have, I might part ways with you, I should say. Okay. In that you were like, I, I like Meta. Meta's great. I don't know that I do. Okay. I don't know. When something steps outside of the narrative mm -hmm. and like goes... Can you believe this? There's a part of me that's just like, nope, that's not. Now, also, me I don't too. have the There's just other ways to go. Now, now like Sharknado, uh, much like Sharknado, I don't have a very good grounding in Shakespeare like you do. Um, <laughs> you can see how they're so similar. <laughs> but I mean, Shakespeare is full of soliloquies and full of asides. Right. And that's part of the humor. And so maybe it's something that you've been, I mean, like literally like you're just very comfortable with the idea and, it, and, and right. it, when it's done well, when it's done right. That's right. I, I think for me, I'm not, say, I'm not saying I hate it. I, I think there's places for it. But I mean, I, I mean, like I would just, my biggest weakness is for sincerity. Like I really love sincerity. This and is gonna, so yeah, and so Sharknado yeah. is just because I knew going in that there was no sincerity involved. You know, I'm just I just don't I'm just don't I, I don't want to. I'd rather see a sincere failure. I, I me too. I will say to you, however, my only response to that I will say to you what uh, a uh, a director of ours in college said to to sort of say why I love meta when it's done well. Obviously, that's the overarching caveat, right? It, it can't be crappy meta. Crappy meta gives you Sharknado. Um, asides in Shakespeare, you're like, sincerity is, you're, you're like sincerity above all. Asides in Shakespeare are always the truth. As the person speaking believes it. Doesn't mean he or she is right, but no one ever Oh, no, no, I got it, I got yeah, it. Right. No one ever speaks to the audience in Shakespeare and lies to the audience. They could be wrong, but they never lie. And God. and so and so that's and so I, I don't I mean that's when just, you said that when you said that you just made me think of The Shining. Nice, because because <laughs> everything is a lie in that movie. Everything and is every, a lie, and and everything might be the truth at the same time. Sure, I don't, uh, folks. We're gonna try. I don't know that we're gonna be able to do it. We're gonna try to all watch. Uh, uh, a documentary about The Shining as well, Room 237. Oh, no, that's happening. Okay. That's happening. Uh, everything is a lie, and everything is really weird, is all I'll say about that. Uh, that Coming later this week. Coming later this week. I, you know, here's the thing is, again, <clears throat> not having seen Room 237, and not actually having been able to recognize, I have not, therefore, experienced how crazy the people are who talk about this movie. It is a movie that absolutely, and I think you said this last week, it is a movie that absolutely could foster total insanity from people. Yes. Like, true. if there's a movie that's going to do that, this is one of them. <laughs> yep. This is one of them. So. That's right. That's right. Do you, uh, do you have a one big thing? I have a substitute to one big thing. I have okay. one big question for you, Andy. Okay. I have one big question. Hit me. Hit me with your question. Andy, are you a zombie fan? I dabble. All Andy. the time. <laughs> I'm dabbling right now. I, I am actually. I'm, Andy, are I you am the like person who's responsible? Left for Dead and reading World War Z and and watching the original Dawn of the Dead all the same. Are time. you Are you the person who's responsible for my foray into zombie films and and literature? You know, Phil, I think I am. Are you responsible for other people's uh, experience first experience with the zombie genre? Phil, as often as I can be. Andy, have by the you way, by ever... the way, I did, this is this is that Ron Swanson moment where he's like, no, no, what I said was bring me all the e e bacon and eggs you have. When I say as often as I can be, I mean like I'm like Greenpeace. I stand on the street and I'm like, can I introduce you to zombies? <laughs> it's true. It's true. That's true. that's all I have to say about um, that. Please go go on. <laughs> uh, if have you ever had a film? 
festival at your own house called Zombie Palooza, where you just showed nothing but zombie movies for 24 hours. Phil, I have, I sense, I sense a, a, a thread and a through line ah. to your questioning. Uh, Andy, are you familiar with the television show The Walking Dead? Phil, Philip, I am. Is it true? Is it true? By the way, you don't know this, but this is actually astonishingly, like, solid uh, cross-examination. Thank you. Like, really? like, 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 you're like. I started from the, I started from the outside and came in, and I'm narrowing in and building into the point. Are you ready for this? You know what cross examination is? It's a series of questions designed to have the response always be one word: yes. I'm amazing. You awesome. are amazing. Go ahead. Awesome. Okay. Law school's next. All right, Andy. Don't no, no, <laughs> no. Trust me. No. Let me just answer that. No, no. Okay, um, Andy, is it true? <laughs> That you, a self-avowed zombie lover, zombie film and zombie genre lover, because you don't love zombies. That, that's you right. That's right. Them. That's right. Self-avowed zombie genre lover and connoisseur, is mm. it true that you, who are familiar uh, 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 um, with The Walking Dead and, and, and love zombie genre and, and convert other people to it, mm -hmm. recently stopped watching The Walking Dead intentionally? Is that true? 99% true, yes. The the reason it's not 100% true is a lot of it, a, a lot of it, which is weird because it's still, because it's still only, I say a lot, but it's only 1%. A lot of it has to do with the fact that I don't have cable, so I have to jump through a lot of hoops to see it. But that doesn't make it not an intentional choice. If you loved something yes. enough, yes, would you not find a way to watch it weekly? Yes. <laughs> if a zombie show was fantastic yeah. and drove you insane with, with goodness, mm -hmm. would you not do whatever you could to make sure you were able to watch it on a weekly basis? I would not only... I you would, might even get cable. I would... <laughs> it's, it's true. I would not only uh, deal with I would not only leave someone who's been bitten alive, right? <laughs> not not only not only that kind of zombie. I would also use voodoo powder and raise someone from the dead. Both kinds of zombies, my friend. Yeah, I know. As a priest in God's one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I cannot condone that behavior, <laughs> but I understand and appreciate your passion, <laughs> uh, Andy. Final question. Yep. What happened? Tell us your story, Andy. I'll tell you. Tell, tell us the story of the day you stopped watching The Walking Dead. Phil, picture this. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm picturing. <laughs> um, so, guys, th there, there will be spoilers here, but not, but not severe ones. Um, the... I'll tell you. I'll tell you what soured me on it. Although I did watch the 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 uh, the season premiere this year, uh, what soured me on it was the treatment of the was two things, and they're related. Was the character of uh, Andrea and the governor storyline. The governor storyline is. You're a reader. You're a reader of the graphic novels. Yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I am, and Which I am. A fancy word for Yes, and I am still reading them, although I'm cir it's, it's, I'm circling the end. There's a storyline that's going to... Because it only comes out once a month. Storylines go on for a long time. There's a storyline that's going on through the middle of next year, and if they don't come out of that in a really awesome fashion, even if the storyline itself is awesome, if they don't come out of that storyline in an awesome fashion and set up something else awesome, I think I might be done. But okay. um, The Governor is one of the best storylines I have ever read in all of comic book dumb. Now, that isn't really saying anything because I don't really read comic books. But I've read a lot of the... But, like, I've read a lot of the famous storylines, or I at least know them. I, I've read a lot of the... You know, I, I Google best Batman storylines and you'll get things like uh, uh, Batman Year Zero and, and The Dark Knight Returns and, and uh, um, The Killing Joke and, and Google best Superman storylines and you'll get All-Star Superman and... Red Sun, and I've read these because these are things that people say 
whether or not you like comic books, you should read these. Yep. Um, the Governor storyline, absolutely no question about it, belongs in the conversation with those. And, and I, David, David Morrissey is the guy's name who plays him, I think. Yep. David Morrissey right. does a perfectly fine job as the governor. He is suitably creepy and suitably uncreepy at the beginning when you when you meet him. But but what they did to Andrea in the comic books is the biggest badass in the comic books. That's a lie because Michonne is is even Just amazing. Even it's cooler in the TV in, show. Yeah. Yes, she's even cooler in the comic book than she is in the TV show, and she's awesome in the TV show. But Andrea gives her a run for her money. She is okay. she, because I'll tell you who she is. She like Michonne is the guy is 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 the guy is the person you drop in with her samurai sword and just like kill everyone within six feet of you, right? Yep. She's you know Aragorn, right? Mm -hmm. Andrea's Legolas. She can kill fifty people or or zombies walkers from. A quarter mile away because she right. is a sharpshooter extraordinaire and wow. she starts out not knowing how to shoot it that's very similar. right uh, they, and they show that in the tv show yes yes uh and she never falls in love with the governor and all okay. of that stuff and and i can say this now this is a spoiler but not but only but if you've seen through the end of last season you're fine uh the governor Invade in the comics. The governor invades the the prison, and in the prison, and in in that invasion, uh, Rick's wife Lori and his baby daughter Judith are killed. Oh wow! And it is, and and they're still dealing with like what has just happened is is that my daughter or is it Shane's daughter? And there's and he's like, I will raise this daughter as my own, but we right. can never, but we can never talk about this again, ever, not okay. ever. And so things are okay, but they're not right. okay, right? And and like immediately after that, a huge force led by the governor knocks the gate, knocks knocks it down, knocks the 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 fence down, rolls in and riddles. Everyone with bullets. Many people die. Many people. Characters who are on the show still now. Characters that never really existed on the show. Uh, and characters like like Lori, who who died earlier on the show. That is when they die. It is it is. If I can use if I can use a Game of Thrones reference, it's the Red Wedding of it's the Red Wedding of The Walking Dead, and it is unbelievably powerful. Um. Apparently, he just came back. Like, apparently, the governor was in last night's episode. Um, mm. I don't know. Uh, but I don't know how he makes the impact that he... Lori died... <coughs> Lori died in childbirth in the TV show. Like, she died in childbirth. Like, yeah. like, and that's incredibly sad. That's incredibly sad. I'm not saying that's not sad. But, like, when you are setting up an antagonist... Her dying in childbirth doesn't her make the governor. Her dying, her dying in childbirth has nothing to do with the antagonist. It actually ends up being about her. Really, it ends up being about Carl and about yes. and about the, and Rick and Carl that more than anything. Yes, and, and that sends totally Rick fine. off on this. Like, I guess my so here's my so here's what it sounds like. Tell me, it sounds to me like you're saying that because of the way you love the the, the comic book. Yep. And 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 because of the differences in the comic book and the TV show, you would just. And because you don't like the way that they're different, not just that they're different, because you seem like, like for instance, you're a big Stephen King fan who recognizes that The Shining is a completely different story, but you don't, <laughs> but you don't dislike The Shining. I'm, I am, I believe it or not, I'm the guy that has room in his heart for both the Kubrick movie and the Stephen Weber. Right, 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 right. Miniseries. Rebecca De Mornay miniseries. Right, yes, right. Yes. But, 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 it sounds to me like you're that you have trouble watching. Walking Dead without just being like, ugh, like, why aren't you just doing the things that the comic book did, which is what you did when you worked. Why aren't you just doing the things that the comic book did and making yes. your life easy? And that drives me crazy because, as you know, I feel like you have to evaluate. I mean, how many times we talk about this during Project Melway? How many times we talk about this 
uh, all the time. Like the art and the artist has to be separate, and I think various incarnations of the art have to be separate. I'm not saying I don't fall prey to it, but you know, and and maybe this marks me as a total weirdo, but I am totally fine with Mel Gibson being a drunk and maybe an anti-Semite, probably an anti-Semite, and a, and a weirdo. That doesn't affect aren't, my... No, that's my, only partially, because aren't we all a little bit of drunk and anti-Semites? I mean, isn't he just speaking to the drunk and anti-Semite in all of in, us? In all of us. I know I am. Um, <laughs> I know I am. Um, but, but it bothers me because... But, but it bothers me when... And it isn't that it's doing something different from the comic. It's that... Like, Lori's death doesn't actually bother me in and of itself because it's something different, and maybe I don't think it did what it was trying to do, but at least they were trying something different, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and they were doing something different with intention. Whereas what it meant to the overall story arc ended up being like, well, I appreciate what it was trying to do in the moment, but overall it feels like a change just for the sake of change. Mm -hmm. You know? And it, no... No, no, I'll leave that separate. I'll leave that separate. I'll, I'll, I'll leave that on the, in the plus column because it didn't feel like change is the sake of change. But having Andrea fall in at Woodbury and fall in love or, or fall into a relationship with right. the governor was like, we can't do the exact same thing, so let's just change it without thinking about what that why means. they're changing it and what it means to change it in the way that they're doing it. Um, and that is so frustrating to me. That's so... Because because here's the deal. I'm not going to... Whatever his feelings, I'm not going to change Mel Gibson's views on booze or the Jewish faith. Right? Right. I'm not going to do that. But... And he's not going to change mine. And I'm not, I guess I'm not going to change, you know, AMC's view on The Walking Dead. But... And they don't have to... They have to please everyone, right? They don't have to just please me. But, like... It's still my prerogative to not be pleased. It's still my prerogative well, to not be pleased. Well, two, two, thing, two things know? I want to say about that. Two things I want to say about that. One is, I don't think they have to please everyone. Their most successful show... Well, this is their most successful show. But the show that put them... The two shows that put them on the map were Mad Men and Breaking Bad. And yep. those shows don't please everyone. Right. Like That's right. Just, just, just FYI. Yep. Um, but I will say... I will say... I think... Um, you know... Here's the thing... It, it's still a zombie show. Mm hmm And I just imagine, to me, it's like, it's still exploring the zombie myth in ways that I assume you would actually appreciate. Would you appreciate it if it wasn't called The Walking Dead, or would you still not appreciate it? Or do you just think it's, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, is it just that in the end it's actually just not a good enough show to merit you watching? I, something I think it does very, very well is, is it makes, it, it makes... Every good zombie anything, which we have, which I have said at length, uh, is not really about the zombies. It's about what it does to humanity. Right. And there's a wonderful moment, which I guess spoiler if they ever get around to it in the in the uh, uh, the the TV show. Although the moment in the in the comic has already passed, like the TV show's already passed it, where Rick basically goes insane and he's like, you, like he's he, they're in the prison. He's pointing out there and he's like, he's like, uh, those are not the Walking Dead. We are the Walking Dead, and it's huh. unbelievably powerful, as you might imagine. Right. It's like, like this is what this world has done to us, right? Right. Um, and I do think they do a pretty good job of keeping it on the humans. But the different there's a way to keep it on the humans and keep it on the metaphor, and there's a way to yeah. keep it on the humans and make it into a soap opera. And it's the difference. Like season three did a really good job of keeping on the right side of that line. Except for Woodbury. Like, the prison sure. was really great at that. Season 2, when inexplicably there were like 12 episodes mm. on Herschel's farm, which mm. is a great part of the comic book because it isn't nearly as long. Yeah. Like, and they had... Okay, I'll, t I'll yeah. tell you, I, so, I think, I think, I love, I, I watch the show. Yep. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. not going to stop, I don't okay. think, anytime soon. Sure. I, there are things about it that I love, and I love the fact that, I mean, there's nothing else on television or film that has explored zombies to this degree and to that so so to some degree like i mean there's just nothing out there like if you like a zombie movie you see one movie it's two hours long 
that's what you get. Yep. And even the best ones are pretty shaky. Sure. So in terms of quality of production, this is already on, on the highest end, of the highest order when it comes production to zombies. Production value, there's nothing that comes and it close. Follows, that's right. And it follows, and they're actual zombies, not BS running, not really dead zombies or yes. any of that stuff. Yes. So I love that, and it, yes. and it uses a lot of the same stuff. For, to that end, I'm really excited. Um, I, I, they haven't been able to figure out what to do with the human characters. Yes. Like, they haven't figured out what to do. Like, Rick, just make a decision, man. Yeah. Like, just, like, it's been five, how long, is it four seasons now? This is, the, this is season four? Four seasons in, and he's still not sure if he's the leader or not. Right. Dude, just be the leader or don't. Right. There's actually a line, I think, someone put it on Facebook, I think it was our friend Daniel, and I think that it was being sarcastic, <laughs> that they actually thought it was a stupid line. Maybe they thought that, I actually thought it was a really good line that got under, like, I actually liked that someone said this to Rick. Yeah. Um, she was one of my favorite characters, so they got rid of her, of course. Um, but he, Rick, the whole, this whole season, because you're not watching, this whole season Rick is trying to be a farmer. Right. And not right. and not shoot not shoot zombies and not let his son carry a gun and all this stuff mm -hmm. and which is a, a, an interesting <laughs> thing except that it should have happened two seasons ago but it's happening he's trying to do this when whole he was thing. on a farm perhaps uh, maybe just maybe. an idea maybe. rather than in a prison so anyways um, <laughs> this character says like look this is part of the deal like for the rest of your life this is part of it like. Killing zombies is part of the deal, and you being a leader of these people is part of the deal. Mm -hmm. And she goes, look, you can be a farmer, Rick. You just can't just be a farmer. Right, right. Now, and then again, one of our friends put it on Facebook, and I'm not sure if they were making fun of the line. I was really appreciative of it. That, because that, it I was like someone being like, because it was someone being like, look, I get it. Right. You, you want to live a new life. There's always going to be undead creatures knocking at your door. Right. You can grow green beans, but you're going to have to shoot a zombie in the head every once in a while. Right. Maybe every day. Right. Like, you take out the trash, you stab 30 zombies in the head, and you go and make your, go and make your food. Right. Like, what it used this to is be part of the this. picture. You can, right. You can be a sculptor, but it doesn't mean that... You don't have to bring the paper in when it lands on your driveway. Here, That's part of the deal. You can be a sculptor. You just got. You just got to destroy the brain. You have to stab a zombie in the face with a rake every yeah. day. It's just part of yes. your life now. Yes. I'm sorry. Right. You're not allowed to. You're and, not allowed to not brush your teeth. Because and I guess you want to be a baseball player. And I think to that degree, my biggest problem with the show is that it just moves too slow. Yeah. It moves too slowly. It 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 finds a whole. Okay, like. You still haven't watched Curb Your Enthusiasm because you're dumb. But the That's but the funny. greatest thing about Curb Your Enthusiasm is that every single season is only about one thing. Now there's different plots in every episode, right? But like there's one season, it's all about him, and it's maybe the greatest season. It's about him deciding to go in on starting a restaurant with a group of his friends. Okay. And the last episode is the is the opening night of the restaurant. Okay. And so even though there's other things that happen in a season, the running through line is this thing. Right. There's one season that's all about him getting a divorce. Okay. There's one season that's like they take in a family. They take in a Katrina family. Okay. Which is, I think, the same season that he gets a divorce, actually. So there's two things going on that season. Ooh. There's a season where they decide to cast him in the producers. Okay. In the Broadway version of the producers, which has its own... And then and maybe the greatest season... The greatest season of, in a while, they do a season where he decides to uh, get do a Seinfeld reunion. And the whole season is based on him creating a Seinfeld. I movie. heard about this. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But they're half hour long. There's ten episodes, and there's other things going on around it. Mm -hmm. And it's also just phenomenally well done. Just some of the funniest stuff you'll ever see. Sure. Walking Dead is twelve episodes. Sixteen. A season? Is it sixteen in a the season? The last, at least the last couple have been. The first was like six. Oh no, maybe it's thirteen. I don't, I, folks. I, don't I think know, it's I think. thirteen. I think it's thirteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yep. then they split that thirteen out over a whole year. Yes. And it just feels like, ah, uh, you know, it's like it feels like a zombie. Like it's snail's pace. It's like, oh look, there's that thing a thousand feet away that's gonna kill me eventually. <laughs> right. Very slowly. I'm gonna take a nap. Coming at me. If right. It, and I'm gonna it, wake up and stab it. Right. If it hops face. on a Vespa, and comes towards me, somebody wake me up. 
Yes. So I guess I I'm shocked that you don't. I think as a, as a, the person as the disciple as the one who has been taught about zombies through you, I am shocked you're not watching this show. I really am, because in the end it is a show about zombies, and you have spent time watching much worse crap about zombies. I mean, that's on right. the other hand, that's right. That's on right. the other hand, as someone who refuses to watch World and you watch the World War Z movie. Right. I, I I don't know. I don't understand you. I really don't understand. I guess my can conclusion I, I, is, I don't understand you. I don't understand you. I don't understand. Here's the deal. Here's the. Is that I a think, song? Yeah. Is that a, a song? Yeah. It's uh. It's um. Uh, fingertips by They Might Be Giants. Somewhere okay. Jeremy That's... Goldstein is very very excited right now. If he would ever listen to our podcast, he would love that. Hi, Jeremy. You'll never hear me say that because you don't listen. Anyway. Sure. Uh. So so here's the deal. Uh, I think I think you alluded to it earlier, and, and we have both alluded to it multiple times over this podcast. It's about the buy-in, right? If I watch a crappy zombie movie, it's done in two hours or less. Most zombie movies are under two hours long. If I am disappointed with a Walking Dead episode, and I'm still watching the show, like, yeah. it's, it's only 45 minutes, but there's another 45 minutes next week, and the week after, and then... There's going to be something that builds to something that everyone else is going to freak out about. And because I've seen a lot of zombie stuff, it's like, all right, I've seen that before and this, this and that. And then I have to wait a year to get more disappointment. And it's like, it's like this, it's like the Louis C.K. thing where the guy, where he cuts the guy off in traffic and the guy like, like gets up onto the side of him and is like, is like, roll down your window, roll down your window. He's like, oh, okay, I'll participate in my own abuse. Sure, I'll roll down right, my right. window. Right, right, I'll roll down right? the window. It's like, I mean... Yes, I participate in my own abuse when I put in a movie that I know is probably not going to be good. Hour and a like, half. Hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah, not 16 hours. And there's always the possibility that it will be amazing, even if it's a remote possibility. Whereas at this there point... There for me is... Go ahead. Go at this ahead. point, The Walking Dead is what it is. They might have a great yeah. episode or two, but overall, it is what it is. For me, there are one or two moments in every episode that are, like, the best of zombie stuff. Sure. And and I'm invested to that degree. And I, there are characters that I have mm-hmm. grown to like. Mm-hmm. Um, they could okay. Here's my biggest complaint. Tell me my my biggest complaint about The Walking Dead. Can't wait. Everyone is miserable all the time. All the time. Yes. All like, the time. There needs to be. Are you ready for this? Tell me. This zombie po- apocalypse is sorely needing humor. <laughs> that's right that's right like, yes it it no one could possibly be this miserable do you know <laughs> do you know why the first the first half season of lost no one could be this miserable the first the first season of lost when you didn't know what was going on uh-huh well actually that was all of lost but right. really when right. you didn't know what was going on and you didn't understand the characters uh-huh they had, even Josh Holloway was so, I didn't like Sawyer the first season. I didn't think, I think he'd be, I, we've talked about this before. I think right. Josh Holloway is one of the most improved actors in the history of television. I, I, I think he's I, one of the I'm worst actors in the first season of Lost. And by the last season of Lost, he is one of the, I mean, it's like, he's, he's, he's a someone give that guy an yes. award. Like, yes, yes. He's, just, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal actor. Yes. Um, okay, 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 okay. Um, okay. But the reason Lost worked if you remember back the first season, the whole first season is a bunch of people just going, oh, oh, like freaking out. <laughs> right. Yes. But it has Hurley. Yep. And it has John Locke. Yes. Hurley is hilarious. Yep. And, 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 and sweet and funny and, and manages to make a joke in the midst of this ridiculousness. Yeah. And John Locke, the worst thing that happened to everybody else is the best thing that happened to John Locke. Yes. And so he manages to be joyful. And there's that's so well said, and they're so close to it with The Walking Dead, because the best character in The Walking Dead is Daryl. Yeah, whose life is markedly better since the zombie apocalypse, because he has found himself to be a good person, yes. but he doesn't know how to deal with it yes. yet. And they haven't given him a chance just to enjoy himself. And the one character that he starts to enjoy himself with, um, whose name is like Karen, I think? Carol. Uh, Carol? Yeah. Um, well, I don't care about spoilers at all at this point. Um, they, they, they get rid of her this season. Oh man! And 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 and, and she's those two are the ones. Now, granted, her, t- and and I know what I'm Andy. 
Her daughter, as you know, dies. Yes. Yes. And the zombie apocalypse still might have made her life better. That's right. That's, That's how bad her life was. That's right. But not That's only right. that, but she in this season is starting to actually live into that reality. Right. And they get rid of her. Uh, now, I say this. Nishan, Nishan, who is the most fun character to, to witness during a zombie raid. Like, yep. Nishan, it's so much fun because she's just a badass. Just a ninja badass. A, 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 a dreadlocked, like, muscular black chick with a katana yes. who just cuts two heads off at once. Yep. Takes no joy in anything that she does. Yep. And if this show would just have any fun, any fun, and I think what they don't understand is even, like, again, one, it's only a movie, it's one movie, but watch Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead works in many ways, but one of the ways it works is it shows people having fun even for a minute. Yes! Even for two minutes. Let me, let me say something about Michonne, because, because there's something about her in the comic. She is even more joyless in the comic, but it works because, the, and here's a way that meta can work. Because it has fun with the fact that she is totally joyless. It's like right. it. She is she is the person in the work environment where where if you say to them, if you say to her, someone's got a case of the Mondays, she'll stab you with a katana. And so what they do is they like draw straws. Like instead of like who's gonna go up and say, please sir, may I have some more gruel? It's who's gonna say case of the mondays michonne this week you know what right. i mean like, right and so and, right. and 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 it's but it's never it's not that overt but it's just like like every because they're constantly meeting new people on the road or they come to a new settlement and every single time they meet someone new it's like hi hi whoa <laughs> you yep. know yeah and yeah. It's, it's small but just that little bit of levity really helps it really helps it does um yes i would love that i would love that and I would love, I don't, I just, I, I said, uh, I know, I know. Can I, can I tell you what, can I, do you think, okay, let me ask you something. Remember what I said to you about Rick's leadership off the air in terms of um, a pregnant lady? Yes. Can I, is that, is that, a, is that inappropriate for the show? No. I'm asking. No, okay. no, no, it's good. Okay. Okay. I know a lot of pregnant people. Okay. <laughs> this isn't about my wife. This is about pregnant people in general. One thing that I, you may not have known about pregnant women is that their 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 uh, that their ability to control their bladder is not what it is when they're not pregnant? Sure. And 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 so a pregnant woman will often, if they cough or sneeze, dribble a little bit. Okay, sure. Doesn't mean they pee all over the place, right? But they like they dribble a little bit, like dude, they just do. Okay, dude. All I have to say about that is. I'm pretty sure I'm not pregnant, so I have no excuse. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I have no excuse. I don't know what my problem is. Right. Okay. No. And so, like, so you will, like, so, and, and if you know any pregnant people well, um, you'll, this is just, you'll know this, and it's one of those things where they'll be like, and if you know them really, well, if you're married to them, they'll be like, cough, cough, oh, man. You know, like, like, <laughs> it's okay? Right. And it's one of those things, like, do you have to pee? No. Not really. I just, and it's like, <laughs> you just want your body to make up its mind, right? Like, do one thing. Cough or pee. Like, like, and if, oh, you don't even really have to pee? Well, then what was that about? Like, then what's going right. on with your body? It's right. very frustrating. Yes. yes. That to me is the, I, and I don't, it's not a, it's not, it's not a very articulate way, but that to me is the only way that I can explain to you in symbol what Rick's leadership style is. <laughs> like, Rick as leader of the crew, right? It's like, cough and pee. Rick, just have the baby. You're right. Okay. You're right. Or or don't. Right. And pee or don't. <laughs> but like, don't do this coughing, dribbling version of leadership. Like, make up your mind. Like, either you're in charge. And he does that thing at the be in the middle of the second season. Yes. Like, which yes. which the second season was about to fall apart. Yeah. And then they ended the first half of the second season with that moment, which was amazing yeah i mean yes it did everything that it was one of those things where for people who were on the borderline they went i'm not i can't go anywhere right i have to yes. i have to stick around yep and then immediately went back to him being the same kind of person right and it makes no sense and then yeah. in the third season he goes he loses his mind yes. and but in a way that just 
he doesn't lose his mind in a way that should... I mean, it's just... None of it makes him more decisive. And I can't fathom that he was this indecisive when he was a sheriff. I just can't <laughs> fathom it. You know what? You know, right. there's this thing that happens. It's actually incredibly appropriate whether they meant to it or not, where he gives Carl his hat. Yep. And then Carl wears that hat, and it becomes sort of a symbol of Carl as, like, Carl as the real regulator. And, and, um, and then he has Carl take it off, and then Carl starts wearing it again recently, I'll just let you know. Okay, um, okay. I was wondering but, about that, because I, I saw some stills, and I was like, what? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, all I'll say is, it's not just that Carl has earned the hat back, it's that Rick doesn't deserve it. Interesting. He doesn't deserve the hat. And that's all I'll say, but Herschel totally deserves the beard and ponytail that he has now. I just want you to know. You haven't been watching and you may never watch again, but just know it's before true. we stop talking about this, yeah. before we stop talking about this, Herschel has earned the beard. He's fair. earned his beard. Okay, that's fair. The, here's, here's what I'm taking away from this conversation. How close we are as a society, or we were as a society, to the, to, the, to the cliche being something along the lines of, have the baby or get off the pot. You know? <laughs> because, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. If we're, if yeah. we're going off of some stuff, you say, oh, yeah. which I totally oh, believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally oh, yeah. believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This uh, show, this show has is it's the most popular show in television, and it doesn't know what it is. Yeah. And I think next time we talk about it, because we will talk more about it, mm -hmm. we need to stop. We need to wrap up. But the next time we talk about it, I would like to talk about what does it mean that the most popular show on television doesn't know what it is? Right. What does that mean for America? Right. What does that mean for the state of television? And 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 then in a less cynical way, like just literally curious. What is making what makes this show so popular? Sure. I'm very curious because you and I were going to watch it at least at the beginning, no matter what. That's right, but we were in the minority. Yes, that's right. And both of us, and neither of us actually thinks it's a great show. Right. Um, that's right. Sorry, I, I look think about that. No, I, I look forward to that conversation because that's a conversation I want to have. Uh, so, folks, thanks for joining us for an in depth discussion of the movie Warrior. Oh, um, we were going to do that. We will do. Listen, <laughs> that's going to happen. Right. Folks, it might not happen until it, 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 might, it might happen later this week. It might happen next week. But you know what I'm gonna do before we talk about it? I'm gonna watch it again. I'm gonna yeah. watch it again. Yeah. Just because, just because any moment not spent watching Warriors in some sense a moment wasted. Um, That'd be true. Yeah, folks. Uh, uh, so a little uh, 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 an an unplanned TV dinner for you. Uh, there you go. America, Second Breakfast Nation. You're welcome. Dinner is served. <laughs> Uh, folks, this will bring us to the end of today's podcast. We will see you again this week. We promise. Yep. Uh, but until then, we are Second Breakfast. I am Andy Roth, and that's Phil Duvall. Bye, everybody. Bye now. The most important meal of the day, Second Breakfast.